Hi everyone. How's it going today? I hope you're all doing well and feeling good. It's always a pleasure to have you with me on my channel. As usual, I will discuss some topics that you might like. I understand that the quality of this video might not be the best, but I hope that the content is still understandable and informative. If you're interested in learning more, I also have a Telegram channel where I share various information that I can't post here. And make sure to subscribe to my backup YouTube channel in case of unforeseen events. So, without further ado, fasten your pants and let's get started. Out there, the freezing rain settles crystals on the high snow, and in the trees and dens, the animals are warm and dreaming. Inside, the people in their homes hope to heavens, they don't have to go out in that, because life is hard enough without sliding and slipping and skating on treacherous grounds. The Western world is navigating treacherous grounds now. Treachery seems a likely word, the breaches of trust from Western government sitting hollow on our hearts. How different it might have been, if the ones who orchestrated this new world had simply told the truth. Truth being the cornerstone of trust which they seem to be so intent on rallying around now. But it is too late now. There are no trust from the people. Not now. Through hubris, hypocrisy and harassment, they have created the monsters that will devour them, if they don't devour each other first. And their gatekeepers, the legacy media, is perhaps more culpable than they. They did not do their job. I'll repeat that. They did not do their job. They sold their souls for a paycheck. They, of all the people who believed the lies, are the ones who should not have. That was their training. That was their duty to the people. They will be the hardest to forgive. In Canada, the federal court deemed the calling of the Emergency Act during the truckers' protest unconstitutional. The damage however was done. Logical and thinking people lost all faith in their government. The ones who were aware of the simplest of things, for example, in a democracy, no government can freeze a bank account on a citizen, nor threaten citizens who supported a protest. Nor can they crack down with unreasonable force on a people's right to protest without violence. Nor are people to be presumed guilty and basically thrown in jail for all this time still awaiting bail hearings. In our country, our peaceful democracy, these things happened, and are happening. And if you are not aware of these things, then the legacy media is to blame, to which they can only answer with, we were bought and paid for, or we were grossly incompetent. They can have no other answer. They will argue perhaps that they thought they were doing the right thing to save the earth and bring in a bright new world. No. They were not. They were participating in and overseeing a terrible divisiveness which hurt people. Even if the earth is in terrible trouble, this is no way to treat your fellow human beings. There is no justification for that. Not ever. And for those who supported this gross treachery, yes, you are the baddies now. Before I continue the video, please give a like if you learned something. Also, don't forget to subscribe and click the notification bell, so you won't miss any update. Finally, watch until the end, to avoid any misunderstanding. Thank you. In the UK and Australia, and elsewhere, the powers that be, are now outwardly speaking about a possible draft of citizens to go to war. Why would we fight their foreign wars, while well, leaders are busily dismantling all the reasons people might actually go to war for? Why would we fight for democracy in another country when leaders are unraveling our democracy at home? Why would we fight for Western values of freedom when leaders are taking it away from us, particularly freedom of speech? Why would we even fight for our homeland when we hardly recognize it anymore with all the governmental shenanigans that have been going on? Fight your own wars. The trust is broken. You will be hard pressed to find people to willingly fight your wars now for your insular vision of the future. The leaders of this world need to leave the people alone. You've done nothing but damage. You have given tokens for titanic demands and hardships. And I fear, if anarchy and chaos was what you were ultimately looking for in this divisiveness, no doubt you will get it. Congratulations on that. But you need not think that the mooing herds will acquiesce to your new world. You are becoming more and more inconsequential. The people will turn their backs on you. 
Just as the far left and the legacy media turned their backs on their fellow citizens like the privileged and mostly uninformed cowards they acted as. What people will fight for is the democracy they are quickly losing, and they will fight for one without such government oversight and taxation likely in grassroots communities. Democracy is not at stake in the Ukraine. It is at stake in our own countries. As to the trucker protest in Canada, to think that all it took was the prime minister of this country to leave his ivory tower and walk down to the protesters to talk to them. That is all they were demanding, having been denied all other recourse for respectful dialogue repeatedly. Repeatedly. The mark of a true leader is the ability to walk and talk with those who disagree with them. A true leader is a leader for all of his people, whether they agree or disagree. Mr. Trudeau was not this kind of leader. And it is too late now. It seems that the government will appeal this decision by the federal courts, probably based on a number of things. They might argue that the declaration was actually moot, since it was rescinded before the Senate ratified it. Some of the finest speeches this country will have ever heard were given during those deliberations, before they were shut down. There are still some who understand democracy. Those speeches were given very little coverage if any in legacy media. They might argue that at the time, it was the right decision based on recommendations from the RCMP and police services, except that this was not true. That was proven. They cannot argue that there was widespread violence. They cannot argue that this was a threat to trade, given that the border blockades were removed before their Emergency Act declaration. They cannot argue that the truckers were unvaccinated and a threat to public health, since the majority of them were vaccinated. They cannot argue the facts that are in front of them. They can only perhaps plead ignorance. They didn't know. And why didn't they? If not intentionally planned, perhaps that happens when you don't engage in dialogue, either through imagined fear or hubris, and the media doesn't do its job. The meek scuttling of legacy media reporters along the sidelines of the trucker protest with chosen guests in a rush does not constitute journalism. Now, it's time for me to hear from you. What are your thoughts on this video? If you found it interesting or informative, please consider giving it a thumbs up and sharing it with your friends and family. Remember, the more people know about these important topics, the better. Before we wrap up, I want to extend a huge thank you to all the individuals who dedicated their time and energy to research and gather the information presented in this video. Their efforts are truly commendable and have helped shed light on important topics that affect us all. Make sure to hit the subscribe button and turn on notifications to be notified when the next video is uploaded. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.